Today we're picking up a very special gecko. They are cappuccino crested geckos. The brand new morph for finally getting them. I gave in. So let's go pick them up now. So the cappuccino crested gecko is a incomplete dominant mutation, which means that it is one gene that will be passed down to any gecko that you pair it up to. About 50% of the offspring will get the gene. If you pair up one cappuccino crested gecko to a regular gecko, about half the offspring are gonna be cappuccinos. And if you pair up two cappuccinos, 25% of the offspring are gonna be super cappuccinos. If you remember, we did a video about this new gene a couple months back. The, the super cappuccino is basically like a melanistic crested gecko, right? It has black eyes, it has a black tail, black body. It's kind of like a patternless melanistic gecko. And it's, you know, something that took the crested gecko world by storm because we are still kind of developing the new genes. We got the Asiantics, we got the Lily Whites, now we got the cappuccinos. There's even more genes coming out, like the Sable and other things. It's exciting because now we're starting to see real genetic mutations that we could you know reproduce and that we could accurately predict and start to mix up and, and make insane looking animals so the cappuccino basically from what i understand right now it adds a little bit of melanin to the gecko just the regular cappuccinos so it gives it like a darker look it also for whatever reason the main marker for the cappuccinos is going to be the tail base on that tail base there's going to be a little block of white before the the tail starts to go all dark for whatever reason the cappuccinos seem to have this trait i have seen other geckos that are not cappuccinos that also have this trait but this is one of the markers for the cappuccinos another marker for a cappuccino would be that v on top of the tail base that white v kind of like if the pinstripe were to start but it ends right there and again it's a it's something that we have seen for years and years and years in partial pinstripes and other crested geckos from my understanding that v and that little white piece of the tail base is going to be very distinct and you can tell right off the bat so the cappuccino crested geckos were originally brought out by reptile city korea they did a whole article they were the ones who first started showing them there were other wholesalers in the united states that were already producing these animals years ago back in 2017 2018 they were already producing super cappuccinos but nobody knew about them and a lot of these big wholesalers they have so many animals they are they are not going to notice the little subtle differences between regular looking geckos they started producing these animals from my understanding they didn't think it was anything special they actually thought it was a genetic defect because super cappuccinos a lot of them can be quite frail they can be a little bit weak but the reason why I'm telling you that is because it's important for us to start outcrossing these geckos so we can make the bloodline stronger so we can make better looking animals and healthier animals now these wholesalers were producing them at large for whatever reason they never put it out there and then years later when reptile city korea started to bring out the super cappuccinos and talk about it and sell them there's a bunch of videos leaked of handfuls of super cappuccinos that were at these wholesale facilities and nobody knew about them except the people that worked there obviously so now we know what this morph is we know what we could do with it and in my opinion the best thing that you could do with a cappuccino at this time is breed it to a lily white when you breed a cappuccino to a lily white you make frappuccinos i love the names by the way and the frappuccinos are just a crazy looking lily white it's going to add a lot of contrast to the lily white a lot of those frappuccinos get that white crest tip on the head and it's just an absolutely insane animal i've seen some of the craziest lily whites ever that are frappuccinos so this is the main reason i'm getting them because i want to breed them with my lily whites and eventually with the Asiantics, that's going to be a lot of fun but enough talking let's head over to fedex and pick this thing up go back to our house and unpack them and get them set up Shut. 
bigger than I thought. <laughs> Let's see. This is a cappuccino. Oh, she's nice. But you see the, the little tail base here? See how it has that little block of white and then it goes to dark and how there's that little V of white scales right on top of the tail base. So there's two cappuccinos in here. This is a probable female. She is really nice looking. It's a tiger Dalmatian cappuccino. Her pattern actually is a little bit more unusual than I saw in the pictures, which I like. But there's another one in here. It's super dark and I'm going to show you guys when we get back to the gecko house. So here we have both of our cappuccinos. One is a probable male, one is a probable female, and I am super excited to show you guys the probable male that I got. You guys already saw the probable female. She is like more of a tiger patterning. She has some black dots, some Dalmatian spots. What I think the cappuccino is doing is enhancing the dark pigment in these geckos, right? Because I've seen a lot of regular tigers. I've seen a lot of tiger Dalmatians, but this one has like a little bit of a burnt look to it which i definitely think is really cool i'm not gonna lie a lot of these geckos look like average you know normal pet store geckos but the highest end of the cappuccinos at this time are starting to look really cool so i think as we do more selective breeding we're going to see the difference the potential that these geckos could really have so that's the probable female now this one's my favorite the probable male it is super dark and I think it's really badass. Look at this gecko right here. Oh boy. Now this guy, he almost looks a little bit of like a phantom. He has like a little bit of phantom patterning. I think a lot of that markings on the top of his head are gonna start to fade away a little bit more, but he has that distinct tail base white coloration that we all know from the cappuccinos. And of course, that super dark tail as it gets down towards the tip of the tail. Believe it or not, cappuccinos, like I said earlier, were being produced by wholesalers a while back and they got scattered all over the US. So there has been a lot of people that have found cappuccinos in your regular pet co stores because they were getting them for wholesale prices. You can't just go to any Petco and pick up an animal and then say, oh, I got a cappuccino. You have to prove it out. That's why it's important that whenever you're looking to buy a cappuccino, you have to know that they come from legit lines and you have to make sure that somebody that you're buying it from is somebody you trust because a lot of people are out there taking advantage of the situation and they have geckos that look like cappuccinos and they're starting to sell them for cappuccino prices but they're not cappuccinos and they haven't been proven. A lot of people are getting scammed right now, which is something unfortunate because it's such a cool morph, but it, it also looks kind of normal at this point because we haven't developed it that much yet. These are the two cappuccinos we got for the moment. I'm still deciding if we're gonna sell one of these. I'm probably gonna keep this probable male. They are badass looking geckos and I'm excited to start to outcross this animal into all of our lily whites to make frappuccinos. We're gonna make melanin sticks in the future eventually. But if I do decide to keep these two, I probably won't breed them together. I probably will outcross them and then breed those cappuccino offsprings back to each other, just so it's a little bit less related. And I think that's what most people should start to try to do. Instead of looking for the quickest way to produce melanin sticks or super cappuccinos, I think we should start outcrossing. Now, I'm very excited that I have my F2 crested gecko, Stevo. Genetically, he's gonna be as far as possible to these animals because he's completely unrelated bloodline. So I'm gonna definitely breed him to a cappuccino girl eventually and start to mix that in with my other animals. As far as this project goes, I'm super excited to see where it ends up. I think it's one of the coolest mutations when it comes into combination with the Lily Whites. And I'm excited to see what it does with the Azantix. Maybe we'll make truly black animals from the Azantix and the cappuccinos. Only time will tell. I'm super excited about having this project in my hands now. 
Guys, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on here, we are now doing subscriptions here on YouTube. We're going to do a bunch of exclusive content. We're going to do a bunch of new videos and updates on what's going on with us and special sales and everything for our YouTube uh, special subscribers. So if that's something you're interested, definitely take a look at that. We're super excited to take another step with YouTube and grow our YouTube following. We're still going to put out the content that we, we have been known for in our regular YouTube page, but the subscribers are going to get a little bit extra. Now, thanks for watching, guys. We're going to wrap up this video, and I hope you're excited like I am about these new geckos.